Well, I am very fortunate now to welcome Mike Rouse, the studio head behind Antstream Arcade, a service that's bringing over 1,400 retro titles to Xbox, including games from Nintendo and PlayStation, as well as arcade classics. Mike, thank you so much for joining me. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm stoked to talk to you. I got a lot of questions for you. Uh, you're the studio head of, of Antstream Arcade. That's a name that I think Xbox fans are going to become more familiar with over the next few days and weeks. What is Antstream? Uh, that's a great question. So Antstream is a gaming platform for classic games. Um, and our, our goal is, over time, to add more and more, more games to, to the service. Now, it's a cloud streaming platform. Uh, which allows us to deliver a huge quantity of games at a high quality. Uh, and because they're retro games and relatively small, uh, it means that cloud streaming for us aren't, isn't as restrictive as, say, trying to stream something like a big AAA game. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've got this huge catalog of games. Uh, once you sign up for it, you can play any of those games. But then we do a ton of extra stuff as well. So we make these little mini games where we back engineer the games. We mm -hmm. go into the code, hack the brand with it, and then we make mini games. So say Pac-Man, for example, we may have like the little dots on the screen uh, and we'll say, right, we'll move most of them and just to leave a few on there and you've got to last as long as you can without eating one of the pills. Mm -hmm. Or we'll have one of my favorite, I'm a, a big double uh, dragon fan. Um, you've got uh, your bat and you're not allowed to drop the bat so you've got to have the bat for as long as you can. Uh, and depending on how well you do, uh, you rank up in, in leaderboards. Um, and then we offer online functionality as well. So there's leaderboards in there. We have um, global tournaments uh, every week. Um, we have other mini game challenges in there like uh, Giant Slayer and Duel where you can uh, send challenges to your friends. Um, and we add like new games every week, new challenges every week new tournaments every week and we got a, a ton of other stuff coming as well so that's really exciting i think cloud gaming is something that console gamers have been hearing a lot about uh in this ecosystem since x cloud but of course google stadia was in there mixed receptions to that how long has antstream been around and how has it changed from uh the beginning to to where it is now so it's been around a long time we're about 2018 when we officially launched uh, and I think about three or four years before that, uh, where my CEO was working on the the tech with a small team uh, and and had it up and running. So we're we're well established. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some very cool bespoke tech that we use for streaming that keeps our latency down. In fact, our latency is lower than um, Xbox, Sony, and at one point when it was around Stadia as well. And again, a lot of that is down to the type of games we've chosen to stream. We haven't gone big AAA games. Uh, you know, this Xbox has that covered already. Uh, mm -hmm. We went for your back catalog. We're trying to build your game library out. And because of that, it means that we don't have some of the technical issues that you'd find on some of the bigger AAA games. Mm -hmm. Things like loading. You can wait two or three minutes for a, a game to load up for you in the cloud on a AAA game. With us, under three seconds is, is what you can expect. And this catalog of games, I mean, I mentioned at the top of the show, Nintendo, PlayStation, classic arcade games. You're talking about that back catalog. And anyone that's watching the YouTube uh, video version of this is going to see massive, massive amounts of games behind you. Um, talk to me a little bit about the catalog of games uh, from the smallest and, and the easiest to work with to some of the more complex ones. The, yeah, the catalog's amazing. So... What we're trying to do, like I said earlier, is try get every single game. Now, that's a, a, a close to impossible task. But if you, you shoot for the stars and hit the moon is our kind of theory with this. And so we have games that are questionable in terms of how their quality is. But for someone, that would have been their best game ever. And mm -hmm. there's no way they could have ever played it unless they come to Antstream. Um, for others, we've got uh, big hitters that people absolutely love in there. Um, Night Slashes is coming to the platform. It's a great arcade game that a lot of people love. Um, and and we've got all those big hits covered. But mm -hmm. we're not just about getting big hit titles. We're about trying to get everything in there uh, and offering you different ways to experience those. And it's it's been an interesting journey because 
Um, finding and tracking down who owns the rights to these games has taken years, years. And some of them we're still trying to track down. They've taken two or three years to find out who has them. Um, and they don't sit with the people you'd expect to own them. You don't, you don't, don't sit with the big publishers all the time. Some of them, uh, the company went bankrupt. Uh, someone else bought a company, gets merged into another. And then you find that it's actually a national electricity grid that actually owns the IP because through mergers through the years, they've ended up with it and they don't even know they have it. Um, mm. Others, it's been the original developers have bought it back off of the publisher. Uh, mm. And so it's working with them. And so in that case, it's extremely precious to them. And it, we have to do a lot of uh, due diligence and take a lot of care with their IP to ensure that we're respecting a thing that they built originally and now care a lot about. So licensing, tracking down these games, ensuring that uh, we have a legitimate way for, for gamers to play it. Uh, it takes a lot of a lot of work. Um, and whilst we have 1,400 on the platform, we have over 5,000 licensed. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it takes a lot to ingest these games, a process of kind of bringing them in, back engineering so we can put challenges in. Um, we have to go into the code, figure out how to get the, the, the scores so we can do online leaderboards. There's a lot of work we put into kind of uh, not only preserving the game, but then giving that this, this additional functionality. Uh, and so what you'll find is that you'll get new games every single week because we're going through this this huge license catalog of games we've got. And then our licensing team hasn't stopped. They just carry on going out there, trying to find new games, doing deals with different publishers and individuals to kind of bring more games to the platform. So how regular is the cadence of catalog update then? You said weekly, is that right? Yep, yep. Every week, new games, new challenges, new tournaments every single week. Do games ever leave the service? So we've had one or two leave. Um, I think we've had a total of five games leave um, from a single publisher. Uh, and that's because they had another deal uh, for something else. But they're coming back again. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, because they're licensed, we, we don't own the games. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're, you know, it's down to our relationships that we have with the publisher. Now, if a publisher has to um, uh, take down some games, uh, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, then we're, we're at the mercy of that. But we keep a good relationship so that we could bring them on uh, in the future if, if, if that situation changed. I would say our licenses are extremely long, like years and years uh, mm -hmm. are how we license content. Um, and we've done many new renewals with a lot of our, our developers. So we've only, like I said, had a, hand few, a handful go off the platform, but they're actually coming back onto the platform again. Um, so I guess kind of like netflix but our goal isn't to have that churn of content because mm -hmm. we really want it to be like a library where you're going in and discovering everything that was there and so that's that's our ultimate goal with our publishing partners and you know the way we achieve that is by being successful and to be frank the community supporting us you know the more people that support the platform the more publishers look at it and go well this is where we should have our old games you know they'll look after it this is where people want to play them um we'll keep them there and so the more uh, support we get from the community uh the, the you know the more chances we have of, of being very successful with um with our catalog and because of that we let our community also ask us for games and then our our licensing go team go off and try find those games for everyone in the community as well man so since 2018 you've been adding games you've only lost five uh, and, and you've been adding to to a point where you're now over 1,400. That's it. That's a pretty good track record. And the community has input in this. How is it that you interact with your community? So currently we, we interact through Discord and social channels. Discord is our, our primary um, place where we interact with the community. Um, but coming to Xbox, we're going to have Xbox clubs. And mm -hmm. so people on Xbox will be able to uh, request games, features, improvements through clubs as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And we've got a, a dedicated community team as well that track all of those requests, make sure they go into our database, uh, and then they get prioritized and sent off to our, our licensing team. So if, if you're on Xbox, Xbox clubs at all, use Discord if, you're not, uh, if you've not got access to clubs. Interesting. Okay, so I do want to touch on the Xbox aspect, but I don't want to uh, go too far out of the realm just yet. Um, talk to me about while well, we're still on the catalog. Are there standout titles that you guys see people kind of drawn to 
uh, or that regularly kind of get that that hit that are constantly in the in the rotation of top played? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Mortal Kombat is a massive, massive favorite amongst players. Um, you know, we're working hard at bringing the whole Mortal Kombat to catalog to to, to Antstream, but um, that by far has been people's favorites. Um, the SNK catalog, we nearly have the have the complete SNK catalog uh, in there as well. Yes, so all the Neo Geo stuff, uh, MVS, uh, those great arcade games, some of my favorites. You know, all the the, the Metal Slug games, um, those are are, are are big favorites. Um, I think for me as a, a, a big fan of gaming and obviously I've, I've been in gaming now for 24 years, I see, you know, there's timeless eras in gaming. And I think that kind of 16 bit era, the, the kind of 90s where we got the the Genesis, the SNES arcade games, it's, it's kind of an era that um, indie developers even today try to mimic with the art style and the pixel art. Uh, mm-hmm. And so definitely all, all the 16-bit stuff is, is hugely popular. Um, but saying that, we've got lots of niches. So we've got the guys that love the 8-bit stuff, you know, the C64 stuff, uh, the MSX stuff. We've got these small communities that love that content. And, and that's, I think, what Anstream is about. It's not just about bringing in what the masses love. We absolutely have that. But mm-hmm. we want to cater for everyone. So if you, if, you, know, if you loved the C64 we have those games there for you. If you love the MSX, we've got those games there for you. And that's that's what we're really trying to do here is 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 have something for everyone. So Xbox gamers are going to have access to a lot of this. You said, you know, the MSX, we talked about the SNK collection, but like you are covering a lot of platforms currently with more being added. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the systems that are represented here? Uh, I'm sure we have some listeners that don't even know uh, what a Lynx is or a yep. C64 is. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the systems that are represented across your catalog? Yeah, so, yeah we've, got, um, we've got a large number of the 8-bit um, systems, so like uh, the Spectrum, which didn't really, I don't think that came over uh, to North America. Um, that was... Yeah, uh, me. Uh, I'm looking it up. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, a British um, console, kind of C64 type, and you had to use cassette tapes um to to actually play the game and what it did is it, it made a, a sound the cassette tape made a sound and the, the 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 computer figured out what that sound meant and turned it into graphics and sound and everything um so like so we got some of that old old stuff that you know depending on where you were in the world you may never have come across um mm-hmm. obviously we've got uh, things like the genesis which was huge in places like brazil uh the uk and europe um, but got dominated by the SNES in um, in in North America. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got Game Boy on there, um, and then we've got on alongside those consoles, we actually have games that are being made today for those consoles. Um, so we've got modern indie titles that are being built for um, for these old retro consoles with all modern design sensibilities. So we've just announced we've got a, a game called uh, Demons of Asterberg from a, a French company called Neofid. And it's it's a game you'd expect to see on Xbox or Switch. Indie, pixel, great gameplay. It's kind of a Metroidvania-style modern game, but it runs on a Genesis. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because of that, we have that in, in, in the collection as well. Uh, and then we've got a ton of arcade stuff. And arcade is... is Whilst you can go out and buy a Genesis still, or you can buy a Spectrum or a C64. If, if you're like me and you like physical uh, games, and I've got a room full of, uh, uh, of physical games here, um, it's, that's not always accessible. And things like arcade machines, we've got the big boards on them. They're very inaccessible. Very few people can, can get their hands on them, and very few people can afford uh, the cost or the space to have all these arcade machines. And so for arcade machines, we've got hundreds of games that you just wouldn't be able to play um and so again it's it's about giving players easy access to things they just wouldn't have experienced and i've discovered since working at antstream so many games that i absolutely love like i'd never heard of dang gang fever on which is a a, a shmup mm-hmm. um and i've fallen in love with sh- i've always been scared of playing shmups 
Um, the amount of bullets coming at you has always always made me a little bit nervous. But um, falling in love with shmups through Antstream because I got I could just play loads. I could pick, I could dip in, try something. If I didn't like it, uh, I could go off and and find something else. And so I think what you'll find is that coming to Antstream, you'll discover uh, a whole um, uh, era of gaming that you may never have played or a genre that you've never seen, um, or a console that you'd never um, heard of. And, and that discovery and that journey of finding new things is, is, is another thing that makes Anstream very special. I know personally, I, I don't think I've ever touched an Atari Lynx. Uh, I don't think I've ever played a C64 game. Some of the Atari, like 2600, 7800, uh, I, I just haven't had a chance to ever interact with in my life. Um, I, I, I know from the July Direct that you guys did, or the July Connect, uh, you're bringing 32 and 64-bit era games, or you're working towards that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm anxious to check out kind of like, you know, what the future might hold for PlayStation or Jaguar. Like, I don't think I've ever played a Jaguar, stuff like that. You guys are doing a lot for game preservation in a time when game preservation is not necessarily a priority for the big guys. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, that's uh, our, our CEO, Steve. That's one of his his big visions for um, the platform is that he wanted to be able to play the games that he played when he was uh, a kid. And, mm-hmm. you know, some of that 8-bit stuff is hard to get into. You know, the graphics weren't great. The gameplay mm-hmm. was, you know, simple. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's there's a lot of people that, that love that kind of stuff. Um, and we want to give people the opportunity to kind of still experience it. Go back and play some of the first, go back and play the first uh, real-time strategy game ever made. Go back and play the first platform game ever made. Um, but what we do is as well is to, to make these things accessible to kind of more modern audiences who are used to, you know, um, the, the progress we've made in games is we've made these mini game challenges. So we take a game that you would never usually play like a C64 game, like playing it all the way through, you probably, well, this isn't for me. And we make Mm -hmm. a challenge out of it and we take three seconds of gameplay and we turn that into a challenge and suddenly that game has a new lease of life. So we're able to kind of make a game have like modern design sensibilities or or get that fun that you like from a modern game uh, from some of these older games. And so you can actually experience some of these older games in a different way and it makes it more accessible to people but yeah the the preservation is is super key to us um and you know the the last thing we want is uh for 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 piracy to get so out of hand that we get hardcore clamping uh you know things like um nintendo i love nintendo but it's you know they're they're, they've seen so much piracy happen on their IP that you know they're, they're going after people, and people are now afraid to share this stuff mm-hmm. with a platform like Anstream. If we were to uh, you know ever ever get a Nintendo license, which is hard, but if we would ever get that, we'd have a platform for for that they could legitimately preserve their games on. People people could play on it, and and then they would have some kind of business model to wrap around it. And mm-hmm. so you know that's that's where we're going. And again. We've seen a lot of articles in the press lately with um, large amounts of games just going forever. Um, mm-hmm. Because of that, we can because of our platform, we can preserve those. And then another thing um, that a lot of people kind of uh, overlook is because we're cloud streaming, those games travel with you. So I, I don't know about you, but I, I get frustrated when I've got a, a console and I've downloaded a load of digital games. They're all the old games that I like to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, new ones as well and then we get the new console and none of those old games come with in, are compatible with the other console mm-hmm. that's the reason we're on cloud is if there's another xbox another playstation we're on those consoles you just log in and mm-hmm. those games that you were playing on the previous console are there mm-hmm. um and so that's how you know we can preserve games if if these old games that were digital on a system come to Antstream, then they can cross the barrier of technology and and follow your console your gaming wherever you're playing important to note that uh within AntStream, you guys are doing cross save cross progression the idea that if i play on my upstairs series x on AntStream uh, and then i go downstairs to my series s 
I log into Anstream, my saves carry and go with me. That's what you're alluding to, correct? Yep, everything goes with you, yeah. Uh, and later this year, we're also looking at um, platform linking as well. Um, so if you set up an account on the PC uh, mm -hmm. or you're on a Mac and mm -hmm. you're playing Anstream and you've got an Xbox account as well um, with Anstream, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to link it and you'll be able to choose where you want uh you can choose one file and then you'll be able to play it across device and carry your saves across device and your high scores across device and your mm -hmm. ranking up and things like that so we're looking at that cross device as well and then that just gives you lots more options so um if you're a playstation user and you decide to move over to, to xbox and um, if we do release eventually on playstation uh you could take that data and just carry it on on your xbox as well mm -hmm. So I, that brings up several questions, but I do want to touch one more time uh, on kind of the game preservation aspect. When you all get the code to these games, and I speak from a very amateur sense, but like, is it intact? Is it complete? Do you have to repair it or uh, get it ready per se? Because I've heard horror stories from people at Digital Clips and, and others where they get code and it's not done, or it's the old code, like the old Ninja Gaiden. Some of them are gone you have to use black if you want to and so yeah i'm curious when you get your hand on code do you guys find yourselves having to repair very very seldom do we have to repair what mm -hmm. we do find though is because we back engineer these games to to make these challenges we actually mm -hmm. find hidden stuff uh mm -hmm. like levels that were never released or characters that never made it in or features that were never there and so we've actually found a number of these things going into these old games and finding like oh well look there's a a character that was never in the game and look there's a level there that never made it in and it's half finished um you know and we've we've often had discussions internally it'd be great to kind of release some of this stuff as well obviously we have to work with the publishers on on that kind of thing but there's you know, the, the, seldom we come across code that isn't in a good condition. Uh, and I guess that's because we work directly with, with the publishers. And so we're able to get um, that, that source ROM from them. Um, but yeah, definitely going in there and finding stuff that no one knew about is, is great. And one of the things we want to build in the platform is like trivia sections about a game where we can surface this um, to people. Um there's, there's some unbelievable things that we've discovered in, in these games or, or histories of games where the game was, uh, there's a first person shooter um, game for the Super Nintendo on our platform, um, which started life as Hellraiser, um, but ended up as, I think it's a Moses game. Um, and so... It's it started off as Hellraiser, and then I think uh, an organization uh, purchased it, and then decided that, that it, they, they had to reskin it to be uh, a Moses game, um, where I think you go around and you f you're feeding the animals. But before that, it, yeah, it was Hellraiser. Um, <laughs> so and stuff like that 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 just gets lost, and people and, and super interesting to know that kind of thing. And yeah. you know, we've tried our best to try find the original Hellraiser version of that game as well, because I think that would be uh, that would be great to kind of see that. But uh, yeah, we we discover things like that as we go through uh, in, ingesting these games. That's interesting. It makes me think about a uh, was it Star Fox Two for Nintendo, like that never almost done, but never quite. And then they made it. Yeah, made, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so obviously, and we've alluded to it, we've mentioned it, but Antstream is coming to Xbox. That's why you and I are getting to talk right now. Um, I'm super excited by this. I, I love the idea. I love hearing your comment about the the latency being so minimal that you don't notice it uh, even better than something like xCloud, size of games and such. Um, how is it that you guys linked up with Xbox? Because I was surprised. This is a third-party streaming platform in Antstream now coming to xbox yeah uh, tell me about how did this happen um so my my background is has been in um running studios and making triple a games for the last 23 years um and, which ones mike oh so many uh playstation xbox uh mm -hmm. ubisoft 2k um so quite a few um, but uh, I set up the London Xbox uh, development studio um, back in 2012 mm -hmm. um, and and had a, a good relationship with um, 
a large number of people on Xbox, Phil Spencer. Um, actually, Phil's chief of staff was someone who I hired to, to, to be our innovation director in my studio. Uh, and so I had some good connections there. And, and when I went to Antstream, a lot of the focus had been on um, trying to get on things like smart TVs. And, and I said, look, we need to go where gamers are. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I, I did a bit of a tweak in the strategy and said, look, let's, let's go for consoles um, because it's perfect for us. Nice big TV, a joypad in your hand. Mm-hmm. Um, these games would be were built to, to kind of play on, on these devices. Um, and so I got in contact with Phil Spencer mm-hmm. and uh, we had a meeting with him. And, you know, he loves games preservation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, he, he talks about it a lot, but when you see him and you're one to one and you're talking about, it, he's he's extremely passionate uh, about it, um, and he essentially gave us the go ahead to to um, get it working on Xbox. And so we've spent the last year um, getting our tech in place, optimizing uh, the code so that it it can run on Xbox, um, and and. Um, you know, without I think the support of Phil and and his team, um, it it may never have, have come over. But uh, yeah, they've been super supportive of Antstream coming to Xbox. I think um, you know they they get the vision, um, mm-hmm. and you know for for Xbox players, you know there's 1,400 games landing in one day. Um, you're not going to like all of them, mm-hmm. uh, but there's enough in there probably that you will like to keep you playing for 10 years. Uh, and like I said, there's there's games every single week. So, but that's how we got into Xbox. You know, mm-hmm. lots of relationships, um, mm-hmm. people that shared a similar vision, people that share a, a, a similar passion uh, to make sure that you know these games are preserved, but also that we can bring these these excellent games to to gamers on console. Mike, that seems to line up very much with Microsoft's. Uh marketing beats of late like play where you want to play what you want to play where you want to play with who you want to play with uh it seems to line up very similarly to the mantra they seem to be taking going forward uh how long between are you texting phil are you emailing him like i don't know how close you were but like how long between the initial conversation and the rollout which as of now is uh july 20th right yep probably a year a year okay yeah it's 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 taken uh it's taken us a while we're a small small team a lot of people think we're a team of a couple of hundred people we're 20 people mm-hmm. um uh distributed uh, across a couple of countries so we're a very we're, we're actually a, an indie team if you like but running a, a global a global platform so we're a small team um and there was there was a lot of discussion about when we should launch on xbox Mm-hmm. Um, because we're rebuilding the app completely. Um, okay. So the app is getting a completely new interface, um, a, a new, it's, get, it's, plum, it's already plugged into achievements, but there's a new achievement system coming in, in the app as well. Rewards, new game modes, uh, a ton of new stuff coming. I, I cut you off only to ask, and I apologize. Um, yeah. Achievements you guys had built into Antstream. Do you mean achievements within Antstream or Xbox achievements? Xbox achievements and uh, achievements in Antstream. Yeah, they're one and the same. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So there's um, the, the achievement stuff's really cool. I think uh, some people have looked at them and said they're not detailed enough or don't have enough depth to them. But I think mm-hmm. when people play the achievements, they'll realize. So we have some achievements for like get a bronze medal, get um, uh, 10 bronze medals, get 20 bronze medals. And then we do the same. We've got get 10 silver. De- but to get a, a medal, you have to play a challenge. You have to play individual games and mm. and get certain scores within those individual games or do something in those individual games to get there. And so what you're going to find is those people that love achievements and achievement hunting will look for the games where they can achieve those medals quickest. Um, and while they're doing that, they're also competing in the leaderboards against other people. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's actually a huge amount of depth to the achievement system it doesn't look like it because we kind of wrap it in and like get this many gold medals, get this. But actually, when you dig down and figure out how you have to get these medals, there's mm-hmm. a there's a huge amount of, of depth in there. But um, when we bring in the the new the new interface, we're going to have internal um, achievements as well, which are going to be very expansive, and and they'll have rewards um, that you can win 
that, that you can then use with it within the app. So there was a lot of discussion. Do we ship it later in the year, towards the end of the year, when we've got this new interface and all these mm-hmm. new features, um, or do we do we ship it now? And I think for us, we decided that now is the the best time to ship it because we just we just get lost with all the big AAA releases at Christmas, mm-hmm. um, and so I guess for for people on xbox what you can look forward to is you're going to get all these games that you can mess around with all these features that you can mess around with and then know that in a six months time you're going to get a massive update with loads more new features uh loads of extra stuff in there um and again just like most of our platform once that launches a lot of the new features content that you want to see um, rewards that you'd like to see will be driven by the community. So, you know, we'll put polls out. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll be asking people what they want to see on the platform and you'll be able to kind of decide how Antstream starts to develop over time. That's so cool. So cool. I uh, I have to think because Antstream is available on PC, but also some other smaller platforms too. Is that correct? Where are you yeah, guys we're on. We're on things like Amazon, uh, Fire TV. Um, mm-hmm. I think the Samsung Gaming Hub um, we recent released on. Mm-hmm. Um, you can play it play it on mobile. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is it is available on on other places. Uh, and again, that that speaks to the preservation piece. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's something that that Phil really resonated with as well. Is you, you don't want to just hold it in one place. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just for this group of players. It is. It is for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, I think though, on console, and you know, Anstream is is exclusive on console to Xbox. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that's where the the better experience, at least for people like me, is going to be. There's a lot of people that are PC diehards, mm-hmm. and they they love playing on PC. My my, my CEO loves playing mouse mouse and uh, keyboard. I'm like you're playing um, uh, Sengoku, which is a side scrolling beat 'em up, amazing side scrolling mm-hmm. with a mouse and a keyboard. <laughs> that's heresy, yeah. uh, but he loves it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think, uh, but coming to console, though, whilst we've got those other platforms there, I think for me, I think uh, this is where I really wanted to see um, Antstream because I think that's, you know, people that have a games console mm-hmm. have it to play games. And mm-hmm. this is what Antstream is. It's games. Um, and it's about having fun. It's about sharing experiences and, and kind of uh, discovering new games that you've never played. So the pricing models then, because you're coming now to a console space, are, are going to be different. I so I would mm-hmm. I would think. Um, I know I picked up the the lifetime edition, uh, which is cool. You guys have a set price for that. You also have a year. Is it a yearly one on console yes. or monthly? It's year. Talk, yeah. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about the pricing model and how that's important for game preservation and keeping you guys going. Yeah. So it's it it's really it's it's something we've played around with a lot um, and trying to get right for people. Um, you know, the, these aren't modern AAA games. And so we realized people don't want to pay per game $70 uh, mm-hmm. for a C64 game. So, so getting the pricing model is really important to us. Uh, now, when we look at something like on PC, the, the, the uh, a year subscription is $39.99. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it works out to, to be about $3, $3 a month-ish. Mm-hmm. Um, when we came to Xbox, we thought there's going to be a lot of people of existing fans that want to play, but don't want to pay as much again. So we dropped the price uh, of the yearly subscription. So when you, if you buy Anstream's base model, it's uh, $29.99. Mm-hmm. Um, so was that $2, $2.30 a month mm-hmm. um, for, for as much as you want to play? Mm-hmm. Um, and and that 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 recognizes that obviously we we, c- we can't give it away free on on platforms because yeah, uh, we ha- have costs. Uh, yeah. But we've dropped the price, so if people want to come over to Xbox and want to have it on a PC and an Xbox. They're not paying the same amount again. And if you're mm-hmm. new to it, you're getting it at uh, a nice uh, reduced rate there. Mm-hmm. Then we we looked at the yearly pass, and there was a a lot of debate in the company in the studio about the yearly pass because. We also recognize that people don't want subscriptions all the time. For mm-hmm. some people, it's perfect. For others, it's it's they just want to be able to uh, buy and play. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's where the lifetime pass came from. 
Um, it's only available on Xbox at the moment. We're trialing it out on Xbox to see um, what the uptake is, whether people really like this or not, and then we'll decide whether we we release it in in other places as well. So again, we're kind of looking at gamers first and trying to figure out what is it as gamers ourselves we would want. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and even in our team, there's some people who are like I'd, I would just like to buy it and play it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's that's where lifetime came from uh and, and like i said a reduced price for for the for the one year uh to acknowledge that some people want to kind of come across to xbox but also it, just better value for money for for players on xbox as well given that you guys are you have a, a strong relationship with xbox was there any discussion to the idea of like think about rare replay which started their whole back compat program but like there are a lot of classic games that rare made or whatnot any discussion of bringing some of that over or letting them live in two places on xbox and on ant stream uh or is that really a different lane um so if we were having discussions i couldn't say anything fair (laughs) yeah Uh, sorry but i mean i would love to i would love to see um ant stream become a, a a place that gamers know to come to for for their um their back catalog Mm -hmm. um you know just like you know if you want to if you want to play play the latest triple a games you know you can go to an xbox and Mm -hmm. and get the latest triple a games Mm -hmm. we we want that for ant stream but for everything you you can't play on your console anymore Mm -hmm. um you know so as time goes on as as like the cost of servers gets cheaper the technology gets better infrastructure globally gets better for the internet um you know we we're looking to bring on old xbox titles old playstation titles Mm -hmm. and you know we'll be like two three generations behind Mm -hmm. but all the time just bringing in the games that you loved and so Whilst it's you know retro, and you you may look at the catalog and go, oh, I don't, I'm not interested in C sixty four games. In three years' time, you could be looking at it and going, well, look, there's a whole PlayStation one catalog there, mm-hmm. and a PlayStation two, Xbox, Saturn, Dreamcast, GameCube, mm-hmm. right? And and that's where we want it to get to. And and again, that's that's why we say like we're we're really only going to be as good as as our community is. And so the bigger and stronger our community is, the more we can invest into just bring in these huge catalogs of games and just make it the place where, hey, wherever I am, I can get hold of the games that I love to play. Super easy, um, uh, super affordable, and, and I can just play them. Yeah, that that to me is the draw because I missed out on, I remember being a kid, being in Target, right? And you see the Saturn wall and you see the the PlayStation wall and the 64 wall and as a kid, you have finite income, finite monies. It's like, oh, I can't touch that. I can't play. That. I don't know it. So I don't know what it's like to truly play Saturn or truly play some of the games that are that are out there. And and again, a Lynx was totally alien to me. Um, and so that's, I think, the draw. Um, yep. I'd be remiss. Somebody, several of our Discord members were curious if you guys were ever planning to uh, back up or release anything on a physical level. Would that make sense for Ant Stream? I can't imagine it would would it i don't i don't think so um Mm -hmm. you know there again we've had discussions about you know do we um do we do limited packs uh do we take some of these games and and release them as physical um that that might be something we look at in the future i mean the reality of, uh, of the industry if you're in the industry if you're a developer in the industry you you know that um as much as we love physical and again if if you're if you've got a screen and you can see my background, uh, I love physical gaming. Mm-hmm. The reality is that can't continue. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just too expensive. It's just not enough materials in the world to continue kind of making stuff out of, of plastic and, um, you know, uh, circuitry and distribution gets more expensive. And we've seen with the, the latest consoles, you know, gear geopolitical events in the world can cause console shortages so we already know that the industry as a whole is going to move to to solely digital so yes i think if we do do it it will be to respect those that are collectors it won't be a huge business model it will Mm -hmm. you know hey look there's four thousand people here that would love to have this or Mm -hmm. six thousand here and we would do it for that reason um to cater for those those smaller niche groups but i think our our main goal is to 
double down on creating the tech that allows you to carry your games catalog with you as you grow up. Um, mm-hmm. So the games that you're playing now, you could play in 20 years time on Antstream uh, on whatever device it is. And because we've chosen this tech, you can do that. Whereas if you've, if we release something physical, you're going to have to go buy the console, the device that it was on, make sure it works. Mm-hmm. Um, ask anyone that loves retro gaming. You've got to now try to find a CRTV uh, and they're hard to get hold of. They never, there were bi- mi- billions of them were made, but mm-hmm. they suddenly become hard to get hold of and expensive to buy. And uh, it's just not for everyone. Um, right. You know, Most people just want to be able to plug in and play. And, and that's what we've done with this tech. Uh, right now, Antstream is seventy nine ninety nine for the lifetime pass edition on Xbox, and twenty nine ninety nine uh, for a year, I believe. Make sure I'm yes, for a year yep. uh, over on Xbox. Do you anticipate this coming to PlayStation or Nintendo at any point? Um, in the future, I think so. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think, f- probably not for another six to eight months. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Um, it for for xbox this really is um like a, a six eight month exclusive on there um, so, but like i said we we wanted to have it um we want it everywhere because we don't know where you're going to be in five years time um so if we can have it on the device that you're playing on in five years time that's brilliant and you would all this all the save data you have now high mm-hmm. scores mm-hmm. tournaments that you've won rewards that you've earned they're with you in five years time on whatever else you're playing so cool so cool well xbox gamers i would encourage you guys to check it out for uh, a number of reasons discovery game preservation um i dig the idea mike that phil had something to do with this that's kind of a cool thing because i think xbox gamers tend to identify pretty strongly there um is there anything that we have not covered that you would like to say i I invite you open floor anything i might have missed uh that might get gamers excited um i think there's just there's more to come. If you look at Antstream as it is today and think that's Antstream, that's not Antstream. Antstream is a, a platform that is always growing, always adding new games, always adding challenges. There's new features that we've got coming on, party features, simultaneous features, competitive features. Uh, we've got plans to do leagues that you could be part of. Uh, we've, got, we've got plans for features that are just fun. You don't have to commit to any kind of competitive things. You just play them for fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I think that's what I'd like people to, to keep in mind is that when you when you buy Antstream, you're buying something that is going to grow and improve and get better and add more every single week. Uh, it's not static. It's, it's not uh, a, 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 like a, a, a standard game where this is it and maybe there's some DLC. It's just mm-hmm. constantly evolving. That's amazing. Uh, Mike, would you please point people to where they should find uh, Antstream and you on socials? Uh, and then, of course, I've mentioned you guys can find this. Uh, it's up for pre-order or purchase right now, depending on when you listen, uh, at 30 and 90, uh, $30 and $80, respectively. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you, if, yeah. You, if you jump over to Antstream.com, uh, I'll save you all the social links. But uh, if you go to Antstream.com, we've got all of our socials there. You can check out the game lists. Um, you can check out our news articles. We've got uh, some great writers that talk about um, and write features on some of these classic games as well. Uh, there's just a ton of information on there. So if you head over to antstream.com, everything you need to know about uh, Antstream and the platform and its games are, is all over there. Well, listeners, I thank you for listening and watching. And Mike, I thank you so much for your time and joining me today. Brilliant. Thank you, Luke.